Okay, now I'm going to touch on something that may be a little bit of a sensitive topic. And please uh, oh, no. forgive me, but it's something that's come up on our show, so we need an answer. The last time you were on, we talked about wrestlers wore wigs. We said Bruno San Martino, Killer Kowalski, Freddie Miller as a personality. You brought up Arn Anderson when he first started. Since then, we've also talked about Ed Whalen, who eventually wore a wig. Yes. J- Jim, did Stan Lane wear a wig? <laughs> <laughs> you know he did, brother. Uh, but <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> In Smoky Mountain Wrestling, of course, Stan and I had walked out of WCW, and I spent a year gearing things up for Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and the Midnight Express were supposed to be my top heel team, but we never dreamed they would re-sign Bobby Eaton, but they did, uh, because, you know, once again, all of the, it, Jim Hurd didn't want to, but all of the, the producers and all the agents and all of the creative team, everybody said, you got to sign Bobby Eaton, so they did. So I got Tom Pritchard to take his place and made him the Heavenly Bodies. And we had shot a few introductory videos, and finally they were supposed to make their big debut. And Stan comes in the TV taping. We were at a high school gym. And as he opened the door, I see him walking in. The light, the sunlight is behind him. So all I can see is a silhouette. And it looked like he was wearing, uh, it appeared to be a coonskin cap. (laughs) <laughs> and as I got closer, I said, what the fuck have you got? He had gone to New Jersey, and I love you, Stan. I don't mean, you know, but he'd gone to New Jersey to this hair clinic and had gotten a hair piece sewn on top of, sewn to his scalp, uh, installed, if you will, on top of his head. <laughs> and I said, what the fuck? Because he was, he was getting a little thin on top. But now, you know, it, today, this is 20 years later, or more than 20 years later. Today, he looks, he looks great. He's got as much hair as I do. But anyway, uh, I said, Stan, can you, can you work with that thing on? He said, well, we'll find out. <laughs> and come to find out, he was so sensitive about it. We had to do the old Mongolian stomper thing, and he wore a headgear the amateur wrestling headgear, and we did this, the stomper thing where he, he's got an inner ear problem, don't make noise, <laughs> and and the people would scream and yell, and he'd hold his ears, but really the headgear was to hold his fucking hairpiece on, which looked like a possum. So <laughs> <clears throat> finally, after a couple of months, we go. Meet, Tom and I go to meet Stan at, at his hotel, and we pick him up. We're going to a show in West Virginia, and he comes out with a baseball cap on, and he had that look on his face. And he sits down in the car in the passenger seat and he looked at us and he whipped the hair, the the hat hat off. You know what grass looks like when you've laid a, like a piece of carpet on it for a while and you take it. (laughs) His existing hair had not been bleached because it had been under that thing. It was all matted down to his head and it looked, he looked 50. And I said, Stan, what the fuck? He had come in the night before because even with that headgear, a few of the stitches had come loose, and it started. It was that deal where he would wrinkle his forehead up, and and his head would move, but the hair wouldn't, or vice versa, or whatever the fuck. And he took his cuticle scissors, and the mirror of a Super Eight motel had just cut the fucking thing off. Wow! So that was three grand, and uh, <laughs> but, you know. But then he he washed it, and he got it colored again, and he looked fine. And today he looks. He's you know he's ten years older than me, and he looks twenty years younger than everybody. And and it never hurt his his production with the ladies. So you know it was just one of those things that you know bad mistake, bad bad decision, bad choice. 